In what's clearly a fast in the history of Uganda's judicial system, the Supreme Court has admitted nine Makerere University law lecturers to be part of the presidential election petition in which former presidential candidate Amama Mbabazi is seeking to nullify President Yoweri Museveni's re-election. In a fully packed courtroom, Justice Lilian Tebatema delivered the ruling in favor of the nine lawyers who will now be tasked with presenting a brief to court on matters of law. The court has concluded that this great public interest and national importance outweighs the concerns or objections raised by the respondents to the applicants as amicai. The dons include Professor Joe Oloka Onyango, Dr. Sinja Kabumba, Dr. Ronald Naluwairo, Daniel Hueza, Associate Professor Christopher Mbazira, Professor Sylvia Tamale, Dr. Rose Nakai, and Dr. Kakungulu Mayambala. In the application, the dons maintained that their role in the petition would be to focus on providing guidance by remaining neutral, considering the expertise in the field of law and governance. Last week, one of President Yoram Seveni's lawyers, Ebert Biencha, told court that Professor Onyango and Dr. Businji were biased. He went ahead to produce articles written by the two lecturers that were critical of President Museveni. But the court dismissed his argument. Even where there are indications of bias in the brief, that's not a ground for rejection of the brief, but instead the court has uh, the power to actually control the brief so the court could sever or delete what appears to be biased. Seven his lawyers gave a number of reasons for rejecting the lecturer's admission into the petition. The first was that the lawyer's brief was broad and general and based on precedents of past presidential election petitions and thus nothing novel. That the Makerere Dons did not demonstrate special or unique expertise in the areas of constitutional law, human rights and democratic governance in presidential election disputes. That the nine lawyers were neither independent nor neutral. That because of the limited time within which to determine the presidential election petition, the admission of the lawyers would prejudice the parties. Court, however, dismissed all the grounds. We are satisfied that the applicants have proven record in the area of human rights, constitutionalism and good governance. They are highly experienced and widely researched legal scholars. The ruling was welcomed by the Dons as a groundbreaking judgment which sets a precedent. The court has underlined the fact that, you know, when it is dispensing justice in all matters, including election petitions, it is doing it in the name of the people. So at whatever level, the people have a right to take part in the proceedings of court. Essentially, you have matters concerning the election laws, things around time for voting, the way elections are conducted, the nature of the statute. But all these things the court noted that required changing the law. So how do you go about those changes and what can the court do today? But the Supreme Court dismissed the application filed by a group of eight civil society organizations that applied to be part of the petition. In their application, the civil society organizations said they had gathered enough expertise during the polls to guide the court. The court, however, ruled that the CSOs had not met the requirements to be admitted as impartial advisors. The court also takes note of the respondent's objection based on statements made by some of the applicants in the aftermath of the election and declaration of results which are prejudicial to the respondents. Despite a decision by the Supreme Court to bar the eight civil society organizations that had filed to be friends of court, the NGOs or CSOs maintain that they will present their evidence to the petitioner for it to be used. We will make our reports available because they have been allowed to the petitioner. The petitioner will make use of them. The respondent will have a chance to reply. Some of the eight civil society organizations that apply to be friends of court include Foundation for Human Rights Initiative, the Uganda Association of Women Lawyers, Chapter for Uganda, among others. Shiran Hochere, NTV.